Man, I gotta tell you, I am so excited about UFC Long Island, a.k.a. UFC on ABC3. A lot to get to on this card. Let's start with the main event, and let's start in one different direction. Now, of course, if you've been living under a rock, the main event will be Brian Ortega taking on Yair Rodriguez. This, of course, will be a feather, featherweight contest. BC, Yair told Ariel Hawani this week that with a win, the UFC has told him he's in line for a title shot. Now, we all know that they could change their mind last minute, but you mentioned RSD at the beginning of the show. We actually had Josh Emmett on the show, and he thought he should have been next in line for a title shot with the winner of UFC 276's co-main event. What do you make of the UFC telling Yair he would be slotted in next if he got it? Uh, I say that they love excitement, action, and they love, Luke, that they can see somebody, a potential you know, uh, Mexican background, but such a fan-friendly style, who has really taken leaps and p seemingly put it all together, which was evidenced by that loss against Max Holloway over five action-packed rounds, which kind of comes out as almost a win because of how Yair showed up that night. Is it unfair to Emmett at this point? You can certainly make that argument, and it's certainly already crowded as it is atop the division right now in the title picture, but it would be hard to argue with Yair short of a win in which he you know, didn't deserve it or look bad. But if he goes out there and beats Brian Ortega, given his reputation, given how I think Yair's record is better than people even realize. I know he's had like ups and downs throughout that initial rise, and it took maybe longer than we thought for him to like fully be in this position to see his game come full bloom and us to find out how great he can be on the title level. But at the same time, he's here. And Luke, if he comes out of here with a win over Ortega, which which is not easy and still looks great on a resume, yeah, I mean, I, I love Emmett. I love his story. I can certainly make an emotional and and sort of legitimate case for him. But this just adds to the stakes for Saturday of what is already going to be a great fight. You got the ABC element. You got the afternoon element. What is, you know, main events probably going to come on around dinner time on the East Coast. And you've got the opportunity that this fight is without question going to be dramatic for as long as it lasts. Without question. And now we can see the next title challenger come out of here. Yeah. My question to you is, did I unknowingly curse Josh Emmett on, on Room Service Diaries? You ready for this, Luke? Do you remember yes. what I said to him? Do you remember what I said to him at the end of the episode? I said, here's how you're going to know whether you're going to get the next title shot and whether the UFC is on the Josh Emmett train. Now, this is, you know, th you know this is the eighth row of Delta BC, you know, stumbling off the plane saying this to Josh Emmett. But I said, if you get those front row seats tomorrow at the fight at UFC 276 and they put that camera on you and it showed, you, know, you know, I mean, even Kayla Harrison got that treatment where it looked like she was going to sign the free agent offer before the Amanda loss. Same night, but you get what I'm saying. Um, and then, Luke, did you hear what happened? Not only did he not get that front row seating, he got a ticket, like, way back. And, you know, him and his manager were, were sort of saying, like, what the heck's going on in terms of our treatment? And now we find out they told Yair, you're getting the next title shot. It proved true, Luke, and I don't want to be that kind of Nostradamus. I, I just, I, I feel terrible for Josh Emmett because... I do think his argument for the case is better. I know folks are like, oh, Yair's fought better guys. I don't think Yair's wins in totality are better than Josh's. I don't. I really don't. And I don't think you can really make that argument that his five best wins are better than Josh Emmett's five best wins. I know folks have tried to do that. I saw some folks arguing with Aaron Bronstetter. He was shutting him down left and right. It's not like Yair's resume is garbage or something like that. It's very, very good. And it's not like Josh's case is way better. I don't think it's that either. But I do think he is much more deserving. But we keep circling back to this, and I hate it for the fighters. It drives me nuts. I've seen it from generation after generation of all these guys coming through. It is simply a reality. If you have any designs on fighting for a UFC title, yes, you can do it the lunch pail way, and you can eventually make it. I've seen that. John Fitch took a long time to get up there to a fight with GSP, but he got it. He got wrecked in that fight. But you know that path, that, that style of doing things, it will work. On the other hand, it's going to be significantly slower to get up there. It's going to be significantly harder to get up there. And if you don't make the most of it in that opportunity, you'll never see that up, that that situation again. By contrast, you can be a much less accomplished fighter. But if the fans like you, if you are important for a particular market, in this case, Yair is both certainly, you know, he has American fans to be very clear, but obviously he'd be important for any kind of burgeoning Mexican market as well. You're, you're just going to be favored. And... You can like these facts or you can hate these facts. And I hate asking fighters to do 
the whole rigmarole of, you know, say crazy things to get attention. I don't like it. I don't even like being a part of that machine. But the reality is what the reality is. Yair yeah, Rodriguez does have a very good resume. Let's be 100% clear about that. But the real difference about why he's getting it, and I guarantee you the matchmakers would say it, is one, not that Josh Emmett doesn't have an exciting style, but Yair has a crazy exciting style. I think that's pretty fair to, to, to say. Um, and more to the point, the fans like him a lot more, and he's much more important in a very, very burgeoning and relevant uh, yeah, market outside a, the U.S. You're going to lose that marketing battle at the end of the day. Just what it is. You, you can't you're not going to win. You yeah. can't win. And that's a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow because if you suffered, I mean, go back and listen to what he told us in that room service diaries. I know you remember about all of his injuries with his face and his knees. And I'm, dude, who knows? some gave some gave all on that one. All gave some, Luke, but he right. he poured it all out a couple times, man. And, and 37. So like he's not a spring chicken by any stretch of the imagination. That's a tough, tough pill to swallow but the but the currents of what drive this business they're not going to be changed by one fighter's journey to do it the right way so to speak it's just it's not reality and so while i do believe that josh emmett is the more rightful deserving guy when i heard that the ufc told yair he was going to get it could not have been less surprised could not have been less surprised at all yeah. and i'm sure you're not surprised either no no and, and even if you're the ufc while while you're leaning heavily on the marketing potential for sure and the style although obviously emmett fights in just as tough you know not as spectacular but just as hard nose where he makes great fights um it's also going to be that you're never really sure how long yair can hold this together so if you're the ufc and you have a chance to give him his chance you're going to take that because Yair with injuries or, or you know, a couple losses along the way, he always seems to be kind of teetering. But that performance against Max showed us that when he's dialed in on this level, good Lord, this is what he can do. So you understand that. Um, Luke, while this doesn't play into the UFC's decision on who gets next, I do see a lot of negative criticism against Emmett's chances online, even though I tend, like you, end of the day, even if I'm leaning for emotional reasons at times, God, Emmett's earned it you know he gave all to get here like i mentioned so uh, i'm gonna back him getting the next shot if asked you know for whatever that's worth but fans don't believe or not all of them believe that he beat cater in fact some people still think you know the burgos fight was close enough to argue do you think that factors in a lot to like not everybody coming on board and embracing josh emmett in his case and his cause up to this point the Cater fight, certainly, the result is debatable. I, I wouldn't challenge that. The Burgos fight is not challengeable. That's an Emmett win pretty cleanly in my book. I don't know why anyone would go to the mat for that. I don't I don't think that makes a lot of sense Great. Well, at all. close fight, close competitive fight, you know what I mean? Oh, no, no, no. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like Burgos got completely smashed or something like that. But it's not... The Cater fight, you can definitely look. I thought Cater won that one, to be to be candid, but I understand why Emmett won it as well. And so, you know, you disagree with the judges, and that's just kind of how it goes. Close fight, could have gone either way, something like that. But, like, you know, this whole argument about, like, who would do better against Volkanovski, dude, if you think, listen, who the hell knows? None of us can predict the future, and certainly Emmett is a heavy, heavy puncher, and Yair is a dynamic striker. But if you're going to predict or bet that either of those guys – would beat Volkanovski. I'm like, what is it going to take for some of y'all to realize there probably isn't a featherweight on earth who's going to give Volkanovski a hard time, right? I mean, Brian Ortega got kind of close with some of those submission attempts or whatever, but, you know, Volkanovski went right back into them to prove a point. On his best day, there isn't a featherweight on earth who's going to hold a candle to him. It's not really about that at all. It's about, you know, which guy is more deserving. And here's the other part too, BC. Fan, and, and, and media too. It's not just fans. Media too. There's a lot of times there's a, a guy who could be well liked and and very popular, and that will tend to buoy people's perceptions of how well they could do against X or Y challenge, right? Emmett doesn't get the benefit of having a ton of fans buoy his status as somebody capable of doing something great, and it's very I say this all the time, like go back to Patty Pimblett. Patty Pimblett's not a bad fighter by any stretch of the imagination, but he is, despite having a lot of experience. I think I still think somewhat green and is developing on a different timeline than a lot of other guys. People are letting the popularity of what he is drive uh, to an extent that where they think the matchmaking should be, which does not match up with where he actually is. It's a clear case of the fan fervor buoying yeah, somebody yeah, to fair. a place that he wouldn't necessarily go. I think you're getting a different, Baba similar Bowie. version of that with Yair Rodriguez. Yeah, strong, strong aggressive uh, use of buoy there, but I do think your points match up. Quick devil's advocate sort of fire back at you. I don't want to continue to pave the path of bad luck here for Josh Emmett. 
But is there a path for Brian Ortega to like right. spectacularly submit Yair where you're just like, oh shit, Ortega leveled back up. Do you run back the rematch of Ortega and Volkanovski because the first fight, even though in the end more one-sided than sometimes the emotions let us let us remember, had spectacular dramatic moments in it? Does, See, does, can the, Emmett lose out twice here, Luke? I mean, I, okay. So my thought is, if Ortega win, I mean, either of these guys should really not like should not be fighting for a title. I don't, in my view. But okay, well, you're asking what was likely to happen, independent of whatever the hell I think. I think if Ortega goes in there and ekes out a win, for sure they're probably going to make the Emmett fight. Right? They'll do Ortega versus Emmett. But if Ortega goes in there and then just blows the doors off of Yair, which I don't see likely, but certainly he is capable of greatness as well. Let's be very clear about that. If he goes in there and just blows the doors of him, like bangs him around on the feet and then submits him with some incredible thing without hardly taking a punch, I think he does. I think he probably does get a title shot. The fans love Brian Ortega too. He is also very talented. He's 31. He should be coming into his physical prime at this point. You know, he's got a lot of reasons why he could be favored over Emmett. Now, again, you might argue, BC, and I'd be curious to get your perspective on this. I tend to think that if Ortega wins, a title shot is possible. But my real thought is if Ortega wins, it's a showdown with Emmett in either case. What do you make okay, of that? I was, I was going to bring that up because I didn't know if you had said that in error or you meant that. That's interesting. I don't agree with it. So you think if Ortega should beat Yair but not kick your TV screen over to do it, they'll make... Well, so here's the deal, though. Then then that's sort of forcing Volkanovski... Are you saying because of Volkanovski's injury? That's essentially what you're saying then, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is if Ortega doesn't take a big beating, right, where it's he's, you know, relatively unscathed, we know Volkanovski's going to be out for probably three months or more. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. Kind of lines yeah, up a fact, little bit. Yeah, factoring in the champ's injury, that does swing it back where that's, that is a smart call. And you know what? It would answer, like, I wouldn't want Josh Emmett to have to go through another freaking test where he potentially has to pour it out. And Luke, Ortega makes you pour it out because he's, he meets you right in the middle of that at deep end of the pool for better or worse. And a lot of times I'm arguing... Uh, which I think is part of how you how you're going to handicap this Saturday's main event is or is Ortega too in love with the drama where he can't be in a fight anymore against an elite guy without it getting ugly and him having to sort of find a path to rally back. Like, can he be as as in control of the fight as as Ortega was against the Korean Zombie? Is that more of a product of the difference in speed and footwork? Kind of like some people say. Don't get too high on Volkanovski's knockout of, of Chan Sung Jung because look at the difference. And I always said, no, look at the intention. And you saw that, by the way, in the third Max fight. Now you saw, yes, this is a new Alexander Volkanovski. Do we need to see a new Brian Ortega?